Hey guys and welcome back to a new Compose and Kotlin multi-platform video in which you will learn how you can implement a splash screen in your app. So in particular on Android it will look like this. If we launch our app we will see our logo and then shortly afterwards we will see our actual apps UI. And on iOS it will of course look exactly the same. I don't want to include desktop here because for desktop apps it's not very usual to have splash screens but every Android and iOS app has one. And I want to say right away if you want to create a splash screen for your app then please don't create a custom one. So with a custom one, I mean that you create your own real screen composable where you add some sort of composables with UI components, design it, have maybe animations or so. I see a lot of people actually do this. And I also understand the reasoning behind it because uh, that really allows you to have fully customized splash screens uh, by just having your own kind of launcher screen, which shows up as the first screen in your app. But this is really not how splash screens are intended. And this will lead to unwanted side effects. Because what you've seen before here on Android if we relaunch the app. This little splash screen, that's actually not a specific activity. That is not a specific composable I created here. This is really just a blank screen with our app's logo that shows up for as long as it needs, but not longer. So this really just shows up for the little delay until your real app is loaded. And trust me, none of your users has ever enjoyed watching at a splash screen for longer than necessary. It's really only the developers who care about their own logo. So use the splash screen to show your logo, but not longer than necessary. At least that's my recommendation. And of course, if you need to do certain checks during the splash screen, like checking if a session is still valid, then you can also do that within the splash screen period. But I wouldn't artificially um, make it longer. Because especially on Android, if you do this, you have your own splash screen composable, and this will show in addition to the already existing splash screen. So you will have two splash screens, at least starting for Android 12. And I don't think that is what you want. So how will this work? I am here in a completely blank Compose multi-platform project where I've just really added the Android splash screen dependency. So that is the official splash screen API that comes from Google. Just make sure to click the GitHub link down below, open the versions catalog here under Gradle libs.versions, and then you can paste this core splash screen version as well as this dependency here. Synchronize everything and we can then add it to our Gradle file. So when I open this here, since this is only needed for Android, obviously you want to open, uh, we want to add it here to Android main. So we say implementation, libs.core, splash screen. And we can hit synchronize now for iOS and nothing is needed. And even though this is a Compose multi-platform product, this video won't have to do a lot with Compose multi-platform since the configuration for each platform's splash screen just has to happen in the platform specific source set. Starting with Android, I actually already have a video about um, a dedicated Android splash screen also with animated icons. Um, so in case that interests you, it's really the same here for Kotlin multi-platform, of course, since we are just doing that inside our pure Android source set. And feel free to just search for that on my channel. Uh, but in this video, I will just uh, show you how you can create this splash screen with a dark background, add your logo, and that's it. So the first step on Android, we want to open our Android main resources of values. And here, we want to create a new I'll right click new values resource file. So we need an XML file for our splash screen, which just describes the theme of our splash screen, since that's not its own composable. So we can design that with our uh, Kotlin language here in Compose, but we rather need to design it here in such a XML file. All right, let's open a style tag to define such a style. We can give it a name like theme.app.starting to mark this as the starting theme. And we give it a parent where we pass theme.splash screen. We can then open this style tag. And in here, we can now have these item tags where we can con configure this specific theme. So how our splash screen looks like. For example, window splash screen background. Uh, that will allow us to pass a background color for the splash screen, which I will choose 202020 here. So a dark gray. Of course, feel free to pick whatever you prefer here. Next up, what we want to have here is a logo. So we'll just have the window splash screen animated icon uh, this is actually a drawable file that can be animated. So you can use an animated vector drawable, which I show you in the in the different video that I mentioned here. Um, but you can also just pass a static drawable here. That is what we will do. So window splash screen animated icon. What type of drawable do we now want to pass here? Well, we need to import that, of course, into Android Studio first. In order to do that, let's go to resources, a drawable, right click here, click on vector asset. And here we can now uh, click on local file where we can in import an SVG file. Or if you don't have that and you just want to learn about splash screens, you can also use a clip art here, maybe this Android logo or so. Just, just pick one here. I will use my own logo. So I pick local file. We can open this here and then I navigate it here to my logo. Clicking open. There we go. 
this is how it looks like. We can, uh, of course, scale it down by quite a lot. Let's make it 100 dp in width and height. I would also recommend to make this actually squared, even if the logo is not um, squared itself. You can see the um, the height is a little bit smaller than the width of it, but I still made it a squared logo because, in my experience, sometimes the Android splash screen API crops uh, parts of the logo if it's not a square. But you can just extend this with a normal graphics program. I used Adobe Illustrator, just a vector graphics editor. So here we click finish and then we do see our logo here as an XML file. So just in a format that Android Studio likes and understands. And this XML file we can now reference here in our splash screen theme where we just want to say, okay, drawable logo squared. And lastly for this theme, we want to specify the post splash screen theme. So the way this works for Android is that this theme app starting theme will be applied when our app starts, obviously. But once the splash screen is actually hidden, we don't want to use the splash screen theme for the rest of our app, but the API will rather swap it out with the theme that we specify here. And we want to just reference the standard theme of Android, which is at Android colon style theme dot material dot no action bar. All right, that's already it for our theme configuration. We can now take this theme app starting and go to our manifest file. So here under Android main, Android manifest, and here where our theme is declared for our application, we now want to reference our starting theme instead. So we pass in that starting theme and also pass that in for our activity where we specify the theme attribute and then pass in starting. And this will then be automatically swapped out with, the, um, with this no action bar material theme. What we then need to do is we need to go to our main activity and here just after on create, we need to install our splash screen. So we just call install splash screen that also comes from the splash screen API and it will just set everything up. And I think that should always be it for Android, which we can quickly test here by opening our running devices tab. This is still the old app, of course. Let's close that and relaunch our new app having Compose app selected. It's launching and you just saw a very large logo, but other than that, the splash screen was showing. If we launch that again, you will see this again. Here we have our very large logo, which uh, gets cropped in a circle uh, because that is what the uh, Android splash screen API does. But that's of course something we don't want. We want our logo to be visible in normal size. And in order to change that, we can go to our resource drawable and you only need to do that if your logo looked in a similar way. If it looked nicely, then you can of course leave it. But here we want to make a group, take all these path tags, put them in the single group. And now we can transform this group. Um, we can scale it down. We can um, rotate it if we would want. But for our case, we just want to scale it down. So we declare the pivot X, set it to 50% so that we just um, scale it down to the center of the icon. We set the pivot Y to 50% as well. And then we can say, okay, we have a scale of X. Um, here we need to pick the, oh wait, let's, let's format this a bit. Yes, that's looking better. Um, here we need to pick exactly the middle value of the viewport width and the viewport height, which in my case is 1,750 for both these values. So here we also pick the scale Y, 1,750. Make sure to really use the viewport and not the width and height values we have here. But if we have that and we we launch our app, we should hopefully see our real logo with a good size. And no, we did not see any logo at all. Let me try that again. Uh, that's a bit weird. Okay. And these values, of course, need to be swapped. Uh, the, the pivot Y here, we need to consider the viewport. And the scale should, of course, not be 1750 times as large, but rather just 50%. Let's try this again. Yes, we, now we also see this here being exactly half as large as it was before. If we relaunch, relaunch this here, then we do see our logo now. Yes, that is looking pretty good. Maybe one little thing that is worth mentioning here for the Android Splash Screen API that you can also call that apply here. So if you actually want to, um, to execute certain code during the splash screen and uh, make it longer, for example, if you would need to check a certain session, if that's still valid or so, then you can say set keep on screen condition, open a block of code here, and here you can then return a Boolean. And this Boolean will be checked on every single frame, so very frequently during the splash screen. And as long as that is true, the splash screen will still be shown. So if we keep this at true, this should show our splash screen forever, as you can see, um, because we never switched this to false, obviously, since it's a hard-coded value. 
But if you would have maybe um, a state from your view model here, for example, is checking session, then this will be true for as long as you are checking the session. You would reference this with view model is checking session or so. And as soon as that switches to false, that you're not checking the uh, session anymore, and then the splash screen will be hidden. Um, so if we, I don't know, have maybe uh, some kind of is checking boolean here, which we initially set to true, we reference that here, is checking, and then we just simulate some kind of delay here in a coroutine with lifecycle scope. And we say, okay, we delay this for three seconds, we simulate some session checking code, and then we set this to false again. Then we should be able to see the splash screen for exactly three seconds. One, two, three. And yes, now we do see our real app. But as I said, these artificial delays I would definitely not use to make the splash screen artificially longer, unless this is really something you have to check during the splash screen because it decides about where the user navigates after showing it. In our case, we only want to show it for as long as this activity needs to load. So we remove all that code again. But we're not done yet, of course. We still want to learn how we can now make this work on iOS. And making a splash screen or a launch screen, how iOS calls it actually, work on iOS requires only Xcode. So here, for, for that, we can't really do anything in Android Studio, but rather need to open our project in Xcode by opening the iOS app folder down here, the Xcode project file, and then right-clicking on the workspace file and opening that here in Xcode. So there we go. First of all, we want to also import our logo here so that we can show it for the launch screen in Xcode. Let's open the assets here for that since that is where our app icon is located in where we have some colors and in here we now want to drag in our logo. So I will do this. Uh, there we go. Here is my logo. This is actually a PNG, not an SVG file because um, Xcode does not work with SVGs like Android Studio does. If you want to use vector graphics, I think Xcode expects that as a PDF file, which is a little bit weird, but it is how it is. So what I did is I simply imported this logo here as a normal PNG, which will completely be enough for our purpose. And what we now want to do is we want to go to our iOS app folder here, right click, create a new file, and what Xcode wants from us here is to create such a launch screen here. And this will be a so-called storyboard. So if we click next, then we can give this a name like splash screen, for example, click OK. And then this is open. And here we pretty much just have a visual editor how this launch screen should look like. And this is actually different compared to Android because iOS does not allow executing any code during this launch screen. So if you would have to check a certain session or so, you would have to do this afterwards once your app really booted up. But we can certainly design a static screen here. And by default, you will see that your app name pops up, which in this case is iOS app. And that's really just a text field. Um, which you can drag around as you want. We don't need this here because we just want to show our logo. So we can just hit the delete key and also delete the text down below. On the left here, we do see a little hierarchy, which is uh, comparable to the good old XML editor we had on Android, where we have a normal view. And this view currently has a white background. We want this to be dark gray. In order to change that, we need to select this view, go to a background here, and then click custom in order to choose your own color. If we want to pass in a hex value of a color like we did on Android Studio, I think we need to go here to RGB sliders and then pick the hex color, which in my case is again the same one and hit enter. And there you go. We now change the color here. In order to now add the logo, we want to hit this little plus icon up here, search for image view because we want to add an image view here to our um, little UI drag this in here, make sure to align this here in the center. Then what we want to do is we of course want to pass the right image for that we can go here to this image view, make sure to be in this little tab. And then the drop down here, we can select our logo that will pop up because we previously imported that. There we go. That is showing up. Another thing we want to do is want to go to this little triangle here um, because we need to specify how this logo actually scales on larger devices. And for this auto resizing, we just want to click on this little red line on the left and on the top. So you can see that the logo, the red box here always stays in the center of our screen and wouldn't stick to any of our edges. And this should already be referenced here in our info.plist file, since that is pretty much the manifest equivalent on of iOS. Here we can see we have a launch screen and 
No, there's actually nothing in. Mm, we might need to configure this launch screen manually by going to our iOS app here, then being in the general tab, scrolling down here for the launch screen file, and here we need to select our splash screen that storyboard which we've previously created. And that should really be it. I would say we uh, pick our simulator iPhone 15 Pro and launch this. There we go, there's our splash screen. And hopefully we do see our real UI afterwards. Here on iOS, it's actually showing a little bit longer, it seems. Or do we need to interact somehow? Okay, now it was actually just showing for, for quite a while, but now we do see our real UI. We can also relaunch this. Now it's probably faster um, right here. Yes, splash screen is showing up and now we see our real UI. Awesome, so that's definitely one of the things where you just need to set up something specifically for each operating system since splash screens are just handled differently on each platform, but I think both of these platforms handle this in a pretty easy way. Down below, you will find a link with more advanced Android and content multi-platform premium courses. Check that out. And other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.